grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. And also with you. Galatians, 
Uh, it's short, so it will probably only last, I'm, I'm guessing, maybe six, seven weeks. Uh, but it is, has often been called the Magna Carta of Christian freedom. It is that important to our understanding of gospel and of freedom uh, in Christ. So you might want to consider joining us for a short period of time. We meet at 6.30 for food and uh, about 7.15 for, for prayer and study. Uh, Thursday, continuing our, our smart continuum for ex-offenders in the Hollywood area. And this coming Saturday, our annual event of the Blessing of the Animals. It'll be in the courtyard behind the church uh, at 10 in the morning, uh, out on the grass with the fountain, and there will be refreshments for, for uh, canines, felines, whatever. I don't know, what do you, what do you get for refreshments for a snake or a pet scorpion? Bring your pets, bring your kids, bring anyone who wants to get blessed, and they'll have a little fun. Uh, in fact, Carl will be bringing chickens and ducks, right? So... So at any rate, put that on your calendar. We'll have a lot of fun on Saturday. In our prayers, continuing, Gerald Rockwell, mending. Susan Tapia still being treated for cancer. Adnan Abad, I understand he was going home. He's doing better. They said, uh, all I know is what, what we all read, that he was released to home. They were in Ann Arbor, Michigan, returning from a trip abroad. So that's not really home, but it used to be. They taught at the university, so they're with yeah. friends on and for those of us who don't know, this gentleman, Ad Adnan, is the brother-in-law of Dorothy Wagner, who's the widow of our former pastor here. Uh, Dorothy and John Wagner were members for many years. Uh, Father Hans, I saw him yesterday uh, at this home that he calls the concentration camp up in Silmar. Uh, pray me out of there, and we're working on it. We have a meeting Wednesday to decide where uh, he can live that will be more suitable for him. He sends his love and greeting. Uh, greetings to all. Today, of course, being St. Michael's Day, is the patronal feast for his old Catholic parish, St. Michael, uh, St. Michael's Apostolic Old Catholic Church. So I wanted him to be with us today, uh, but he's not yet ready to make that, that trip. So please keep Father Hans in your prayers. Uh, Mary Holman, getting stronger, wanting to come home. Uh, we're still praying for Scott Waldron, Mary Lou Sabbath, uh, and Carl Denise Sue Orban are going in. Uh, who has Lyme's disease. Please lift these wonderful people in your prayers. We also have a candle lighted in memory of Ella Lomani who passed about 12 days ago. Uh, let us then continue our worship with the readings of the scripture. Your part being the 
the, uh, the low print. <clears throat> Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, and hear God's house Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems all your satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. Bless the Lord, you angels, you mighty ones who do not have to think, but obey the voice of God's word. Bless the Lord, all you hosts of God, you servants who do God's will. Bless the Lord, all you servants of God. Bible and even more of the stories that are outside the Bible are pretty fanciful. 
Why should we take any of this stuff seriously? Is it all fiction? Or should we look at a, a bigger, a deeper truth behind it? Even before the Bible began to be written down, human beings already apparently believed in the existence of heavenly intermediaries, messengers, between God and the earth. The word itself, angel, has not changed for thousands of years from the time of the Zoroastrians and the Mycenaeans. It's almost the exact same word in English and French and Spanish and Old German and Latin and Greek. More than anything, angels are seen as messengers. We can figure this out, obviously, because uh, the, the word is also the root of two other kind of churchy words we use, evangelist and evangelism. It's right in there. Angels, like true evangelists, are sent out to, to announce or to proclaim things or to reveal the thing <coughs> of God. St. Luke is especially fond of telling us about angels. They're uh, there are eight significant places in his gospel where he talks of angels, and I mention only one important story as an example. You can't imagine Christmas without angels, can you? First, the angel Gabriel appears to Zechariah to tell him that his aging wife Elizabeth is going to bear a son in her old age. And then Gabriel appears to Mary and announces that she is blessed among women and will bear a holy child. And then a, mess, a multitude of the heavenly host of the whole big crowd appear to announce the birth of Jesus to shepherds, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Even Jesus himself mentions 12 legions of angels whom he said he could summon to defend himself if needed. And I did a little checking about how big is a legion supposed to be, and it turns out something like 4,200 soldiers. So this could be 50,000 angels Jesus is referring to. If we think of them showing up in beautiful spiritual scenes, not just on Hallmark cards, you know, or in cheesy but <coughs> pictures, angels also are in the courts of heaven. If God is king of the universe, it's only fitting that God is surrounded with those who offer praise and who, who carry out orders and are part of the divine council when things are being discussed about life on earth. But it's in Matthew's Gospel that there's this one mysterious saying of Jesus that has caught the imagination of, of countless Christians. In chapter 18, where he encourages his disciples to, to bring children to him and, and not forbid them, he uses this term, little ones. And the context seems to be saying that, that Jesus welcomes not only little children, but innocent people who are not, you know, like your, your, your crafty and conniving adults. They're simple. They're innocent. They're, there's a special relationship of the meek and the lowly and the childlike, those who are trusting with God. And Jesus says, take care that you don't despise one of these little ones. For I tell you, in heaven, their angels continually see the face of my Father. If, in fact, the, the heavenly courts have legions of, of angels, the, the servants and messengers of Almighty God, only a few must have the privilege, the high honor of being so close as to see God's face perpetually. Yet Jesus solemnly assures his disciples that these little ones, the lowly and the childlike, have those very angels as their guardians. In the Bible, angels are not always mentioned as, uh, as supernatural beings, you know, with that idea of some aura surrounding them or having wings or the ability to walk through walls or something. In, uh, in another less well-known story, in the book of Acts, chapter 12, Peter has been arrested and is in prison. He is in prison for preaching about Jesus. And an angel appears to him in the middle of the night when he is uh, sound asleep between two guards and shackled with chains. And the angel wakes him up and releases his shackles and leads him out of the prison gates. They just open for them. And the guards sleep right through. Peter returns then to a private home that belonged to the mother of John Mark, who was the author of our second gospel, Mark's gospel. 
Although the proper names of many women don't wind up in our Bibles, which is sad, here this story preserves the name of one maid, a servant, who was there that night. Her name was Rhoda. And Rhoda comes to the gate when she hears knocking, and, and she realizes from his voice that it's Peter. And so she runs back inside to tell the other disciples that Peter is outside. And they tell her, that this is very formally put in the book of Acts, you are nuts, because they know he's in prison. And she says, no, really, it's Peter outside, and he's still knocking out there as she goes back, says, Peter has been released. And the disciples tell her again, no, 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 it must be his angel and not Peter. By this time, of course, the angel has disappeared, and it is Peter outside the gate. Well, in both those passages, both those places where Jesus talks to the little ones and their angels and Peter uh, at the, at the uh, uh, a gate, the New English Bible translates the word in the way many of us think about angels. He calls them guardian angels. This does all begin to sound a little fanciful, doesn't it? Like the sentimentality of sappy or syrupy religious sentiments, those overdone Victorian paintings we've all seen of beautiful young women with yards and yards and yards of pure white chiffon and, and a couple of wings, you know, to make them look like they're heavenly and not just earthly desire. But what I've discovered is that both the Jewish faith and the Christian faith, in reading their own scriptures, acknowledge the idea that there are guardian angels. St. Jerome was considered one of the four great doctors of the church in the fourth century taught that every human being has a guardian angel. For me, it raises some questions then of, of, of faith today. In these tough times when people put more faith in their, in their smartphones than they do in Almighty God. Okay, how can I sense, for example? How can I know that God is near? That God cares about me and is with me? How can I know that God is not just some distant creator and ruler who watches the orbits of the stars from outer space, but that God is here for me? And how come all those ancient people found it so easy to believe that there are angels moving back and forth between heaven and earth, like the emissaries climbing Jacob's ladder? We don't see them, do we? So is all that stuff just superstitious or pious nonsense? And then another question that often nags me in our times, how can God actually answer the prayers of all the people, the billions of people in the world? We cannot know if angels are indeed actual individual creatures and, and have names and identities such as Raphael and Michael and Daniel and Gabriel, the, the, the archangels of the Christian faith. The Jewish faith also says that Gabriel uh, appeared to the prophet Daniel to reassure him. And in both of our readings this morning, the first reading, the second reading, Michael is pictured as the leader of other angels, a, a warrior archangel, personally charged with the will of God to defeat evil and all of its forces. So what's for me in, in my personal spiritual life? is that angels are spirits that are the extension of the Spirit of God above. And they're charged with carrying out God's will. I want to leave room for mystery. We don't know, but we can trust. I can't say certainly that angels are eternal beings who, who spend their time in heavenly courts and just awaiting uh, orders to carry out. But the scriptures want us to think and to, to trust that God's will goes out and that God's will has power and accomplishes the word of God in the lives of the people of God and affects the destiny of this world. I've always put my trust in the, in the power of prayer, even though many people today think it's just wishful thinking. But I personally had so many life experiences in which constant prayer plays more than a, a coincidental role in the lives of, of people who are dear to me and in the events as they unfold in life. I can't say I know how all this works, but that, for that matter, I can't say I know how aspirin works to take away my headache. I can't know the, how the whole uh, 
process of eating food actually nourishes and builds my body. I can't know how the yolk of an egg suddenly starts beating to become the heart of a baby chick. I don't know the mechanism, but I trust the relationship of God's ordering of all things, the world and the universe, and God's will for living creatures, and the promise of Jesus Christ, that if we ask anything in the name of God, it will be done for us. Amen? Amen. And in all that mysterious faith language that the world may maybe make fun of, I cannot but wonder about angels, the guardian angels of the Bible, and the faith that every human being has been given a guardian by God. How many times do you and I feel alone or help? But as adults who you all too quickly notice that the rest of the world doesn't have time for you if you aren't rich and famous and glamorous. It doesn't wait for you if you screw up or you fail or you have a handicap to overcome or if you, if you are flat broke. It was Lily Tomlin, after all, who, who says to her ex-husband in one of, uh, one of her dramas, remember, we're all in this alone. <laughs> Comforting thought, isn't it? As tempting as it is to to buy into that, that to accept the, the, the cold reality that nobody cares. Our life experiences can teach us exactly the opposite. Some people may not get it because they, they give all their attention to their own drama and they give such power to their pain or their, their despair, but for people who trust in the promises of God, we begin to realize, to become aware, to see the presence of God with us in our troubles. Just when life begins to stall, we may hear something that is not heard with ears. We have the spiritual sixth sense. In the book of Hebrews, the writer tells us, do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. And it reminds us that not all angels reveal their wings. Not all wear dazzling white to, to cue you in. God's messengers move among us. And they come to us and they hold us and protect us. And sometimes they save our behinds, whether we're aware of it or not. Perhaps we, we shouldn't think that, uh, that just as picture language or as, as metaphor, as when Father Hans refers to his friends Edita and Marge as angels because they were there at the right moment to help him when he was stressed and in great need. Maybe we should just, you know, let the possibility float out there in our hearts and minds that God indeed does work in, in mysterious ways and, and through people that we think are just ordinary people. But people who hear God's word and do God's will and bring a message of power and, and, and peace precisely when you need it the most. Amen? What's the bottom line? The bottom line of the, the Bible's teachings about angels is that God is watching over you. You have a guardian. That guardian is entrusted with God's word for you. God's will and promises that will have power in your life. You're not being controlled, you know, like you're, you're a puppet on some divine string, but with your permission, you can be guided or even nudged by God's angel. If you run from all this, somehow I think there may be an angel before God weeping that you left. But if you turn around, if you come to your senses like the prodigal son, all the angels in God's presence rejoice you're on your way home. And the mechanism of how all this works by my lights is governed by our own spiritual attention. If we will just listen and watch and, and give attention not to the anxiety and the distractions of, of our daily life, and especially if we pray, if we, if we just give our open channel of communication back to God and listen and speak to God. It may be very well that an angel of God has got our backs 
An angel is the very strength that keeps us standing. An angel is the one who removes our shackles and opens the doors of the prisons we find ourselves inside. Now, can you follow orders? The Bible says that angels do. If you can follow orders, and you see someone who's hurting or in need, someone who's abandoned, someone who's lost, someone who's hungry, and you call to mind God's good will for all people, might it not be true, absolutely true, that you become that messenger, that, that one that is sent by God, with or without your hands, it doesn't matter, that you are God's presence for us. Might it not be that this is how God answers prayers? Through us. Amen. Amen.
spirits. As Christ rose from the dead, we rise in the newness of life in his name. Let us remember our baptism in Christ the Lord.
tithes and offerings will be received.
praise of your majesty and glory, and in the redemption we have in Jesus Christ our Lord. So with angels and archangels and saints above, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Thank you.